Hi there, my name is Joellen and I'm your host today. Let's discuss successful content editing and what is content editing? So we're going to go through 10 steps today to help you look at that and decide what it is you want and need, who you can hire, who you can trust, and how you can reach the goals that are ultimately drawing you towards editing. Of course, you need to decide when to start, explore all the things that you need, and we want to talk just a little bit about some free tools that are out there that can help you to save time and money before you get started and what it is your goals are overall. So let's get started with that. Content editing always starts with all editing or starts, shall I say, with self-editing. And you want to use some powerful tools out there. I prefer to use Pro Writing Aid. They're extremely good. They've got some plugins, some different add-ons that you can use there in their online tool. And they're excellent for whatever type of editing you are doing, whatever type of writing you're doing. Um, I have them plugged into all of my computers and laptops and things. So please uh, check them out. Fictionary is when you're doing your story editing. It's another great company. I encourage you to take a look there. And of course, we do have an ebook that you can download to get all this information a little bit more. Today, we're covering just the 10 steps for successful content editing. And one, we want to start with, how do you evaluate your manuscript needs? What is it that you exactly need from that? Do you need a copy editor, a line editor, or a content editor? And do you even know what those mean? Because they are distinctly different for each of the types of writing that you're doing and what you're going to end up with. The content editor is where we're focusing today, and it evolves around the developmental, structural, substantive or story editing. So again, there's a lot of different ones involved there, but it's the high level editing of looking at the overall presentation and the base, the structure of what you've created. So you want to compare these different editing services and decide when each is necessary. First step is going to be the developmental high over overall structure that you're building before you go into line editing and you finish with copy editing. So there are three phases to that. Developmental editing well, people say, well, I'm a panters, which means I fly by the seat of my pants and I'm not using an outline. How can I work with a content editor? Well, they're great for giving you a little bit more of that structure and seeing where some of the holes may be if you don't have that outline there. Planners love this because they can get confirmation and validation of what they've been doing and the content editor can help them to do that. And then, of course, the last one is, is it any good? Do you like it? That's a big question we get here. And of course, the editor is going to give you a professional, neutral, and honest response to that question, which many people cannot do that because they know you too well. Line editing is when you're doing revisions, when you're revising again and again and again. So make sure that you're checking into that after your content editing. And once you've done that and you're done, you know that you're not making any more changes to the actual presentation. That's when you go into copy editing it is your final edit before your formatting. So those are the basics, the three levels there. And of course, people always talk about proofreading. Proofreading is technically after the formatting, so it's not editing. However, people do use that word interchangeably, so of course we do need to address that here. But you want to do your copy edit, then your formatting, and then your proof to make sure that that formatting didn't mess up anything that you had in your documents. And of course, Anytime you have an extra set of eyes on your document, I think it can only benefit you. So the second step is how do you get the best price and find these qualified content editors? Well, the best price is to only hire the qualified ones who, who can help you determine who is your audience. Uh, they can cover and decide what is your goal and help. And once you can clearly enunciate that, then they can definitely get you forward on that and they'll help you outline manuscripts. So again, they're going to be working with you in those three areas. So if you can answer those, it's going to help your light a lot. So you want to keep rewriting your book again and again and again, and make sure that you are ready to present it to the public before you actually do that. Now, you can compare editors and what they actually do for you, because as I mentioned, they have different places in the uh, editing journey. So you want to make sure that you're using the appropriate editor at the appropriate time. Content editors are your big picture. They're dealing with the structure, the development, the overall content of your entire work. So again, that's when you're dealing with the content editors. Line editors are line by line, and your copy editors are going to do the final edit before it goes into formatting. Content editing looks at your entire presentation. What are you trying to convey? What is it that you want your readers to walk away with? What do you want them to do? And are you successfully doing that, engaging your readers 
so that they want to follow you again and again. So they're going to focus on your overall presentation and work on your message while maintaining your voice at all times. So again, be aware of that. Line editors come in afterwards. They're cleaning up uh, the chapter, the paragraph to paragraph, and that's why they're called line editing. They're reading each line to make sure it flows from point to point, but they're not evaluating the overall the story or the overall uh, message there as much as they're trying to make sure that what you're saying is grammar, spelling, punctuation, that that's all very clean and transitioning and the voice, it stays in the right uh, tense and everything's a subject verb agreement, etc., etc. All those fun little grammar uh, things that we have to deal with day to day. And then copy editors, again, they're your final technical review, grammar, spelling, punctuation, just making sure that each sentence is absolutely correct. But if it makes sense in the sense of what you're trying to convey, that is when you want a much higher level of editing. So again, determine what you want. What is it that you want from your content editor? And you might want to give some thought to that before you approach a professional editor, especially a content editor, because they can do all kinds of fantastic things for you. They can provide a critique, a review. They can give you advice on how to approach your overall presentation. They can help you structure and outline your manuscript in a way that helps you engage your audience better. They're going to prepare you for the multiple revisions. So the better you do at the beginning, the less you have to do later on. And of course, it's always ideal when you leave your content editor to hire a different copy editor so they can help you achieve that uh, next phase of the journey. Now, I'd love to show a little description here of editing is not linear. It's not something that you just progress. Even though we use phrases like levels and phases of editing, we're not progressing and going forward. It is a back and forth. Uh, it's a dance. And it goes around in circles. So you start your writing, you do your bigger content edit or your story edit, you start getting readers involved, you have some line editing, you're, and all the way through this, you're using all the free tools and different available uh, opportunities out there before you go into your copy edit and finish up with your proofread before you actually start the publishing, which again is a long process there. So you need to be prepared for what it is. Now we mentioned you need to have a content editor to produce and provide the content editing. For example, at First Editing, we have uh, certified story editors who can help fiction at writers create and finish up their um, story content edit, which means that they go through a special process, they've been through training, they're vetted, they have experience, so that helps you to know that you're getting the qualified help that you need at that time. And remember, the reason why you're choosing to deal with a professional is that you need the neutral, uh, honest feedback from the people around you as opposed to your mom or dad or your colleagues or your friends or your family who just can't honestly be honest with you. They, You can't trust them not because of who they are, but you can't trust them because of how much they care for you. So again, you need to have an experienced, educated, and vetted professional who can help you get real feedback that can help you improve. And I would say that the best editors out there, it's a free education as part of the overall editing process because in the future, you'll be able to do a lot more of this yourself, which does save you time and frustration and money. So what can you expect from a trustworthy content editor? They should be able to show you exactly what they propose for your document. That means providing you with a sample, providing you with a critique, a review, some feedback on what you have already done. And of course, they can also show you how successful they've been with other clients, how much they published. Check that out. They can, can confirm that you need what you're asking for. They're going to confirm that you get what you need and make sure that they're providing you that and no less. And they're going to determine your editing price. You should know this up front. There should be no worries after you walk away, how much it's going to cost or when it's going to be delivered. So again, they're setting deadlines and timelines for you. And then you need to, um, they'll answer all your questions and how it's going to follow up. So they should be able to outline the whole overall process so you know what to expect. And I think that's really important. And lastly, with content editing, you do get a professional summary letter. And that is basically an overall presentation of all the changes and suggestions and feedback that they're giving to you so that you can see from the overall perspective of what you're going to have to do in your revision after the content editing. 
And if you didn't realize it, yes, you're going to have a lot of revisions after content editing because they're not correcting it for you. They're trying to smooth and polish and make sure that you're presenting it in a way that you can be proud of. So what determines the price and how much does it cost? Well, the price is based on your needs, uh, the evaluation, outline, and structure. How in-depth is this editing going to require? How much writing have you done before? Where you are in the process, making sure that you are, you know, if you're quite done with the outline, the outline and structure of your development, then you may not need as much of an in-depth content added as someone who's at the very, very beginning. And of course, what are you asking for? Are we looking at different style guides, presentations? What is the motivation that's moving you through there? So again, it all comes down to the energy and time that's going to be invested in your content edit. Now, you should compare these different desires because some people want coaching, they want critiques, they want revision, uh, they want approval, confirmation, all those great things that make you feel confident and secure that you are really ready as an author to start preparing to share it publicly, and that's very important. So when should you start? Well, whenever you have the fully outlined manuscript is great because then you're absolutely ready for a content edit. If you've completed your self-editing and you want that help and advice, you should reach out. And of course, when you've just had enough and you need to stop, always before you publicly share or distribute. And now we're on to step seven. So which content editing services do you actually need? And that's a very good question because your manuscript has a certain status, meaning how prolific of a writer are you? Uh, that is a big determination of what your content services are going to require. Your needs, your, are you addressing the plot, the point of view, your intent, all these different things, are you addressing them the correct? If you're doing nonfiction, have you clearly outlined what your call to actions are and what you want people to do and why you're engaging them in, in the way that you are during that time? What are your ultimate goals and questions? That always comes back there. And then, of course, you need to look at your editor's evaluations and recommendations. And this is all going to be customized and bespoke to your particular manuscript so that it can be done correctly. So step eight, where can you find that assistance or free help before hiring the professional to help you save some money? Well, go online. There's a lot of tools out there. I mentioned Pro Writing Aid and Fictionary, and there's other favorites there. You can look at firstediting.com's website. We have some recommendations additionally there. You can look into writing groups and beta readers, but be careful because they're all going to have an opinion and you want to make sure that you're actually um, not getting overloaded because it can be hard to, to take in just too much information and too many recommendations. You've got your books and blogs and courses online. Again, just decide what you're willing to put in at this point and for the lifetime investment of your books and your writing career. So why is the professional content editing necessary? It's your baby. It is the biggest investment you're going to make in the book. And it really is important that you do it right because it's your first impression and it creates a solid foundation for everything you're going to do after that. So you want to save your time, money, and energy. How does content editing help you reach your goals? Well, it helps you become a successfully published author by telling your story, motivating and inspiring others. It's going to help establish your credibility and you're going to become published and fulfill those life goals you've thought about, and of course, help you sell those books and other services that are out there. So we're going to help you clarify your voice and connect your, your presentation, uh, critique your skills, and help you become a better writer overall. And that's what content editing is all about. It is the biggest investment, the most expensive editing, but it's well worth it. So again, make sure you get a free editing sample. Check out what's available. Talk to your editor. Talk to uh, your, your account manager and make sure that you feel confident with what you're about to engage with. And if you don't, step on to the next one. So again, it's my, been my pleasure talking to you about content editing today. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. I can be reached at editors at firstediting.com or you can leave a comment below and we will get back to you. Thank you.